and vice versa. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. We have a mic right here. Thank you. Thank you Good so much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thanks so much for being with us. We're going to get to the, uh, the audience in just a second. I want to start by asking you, though, for weeks you have been calling Donald Trump unstable, unhinged. You've called him dangerous. You've quoted General Milley recently, who called him a fascist. Today, you quoted General Kelly, who said that Trump repeatedly praised Hitler. Yeah. But there are tens of millions of Americans right now who have heard all those things and they don't buy it. Or even if they do, they're still going to vote for Donald Trump. He's arguably more popular now than ever. You have 13 days to go. What do you say to those voters to convince them? Because some of them are in this room. Sure. You all came in, maybe leaning, but undecided or persuadable. How many of you, show of hands, will leave tonight planning to support the vice president? Two have made a final decision. Now, you came in leaning that way? Pretty much right in the middle. Okay. Came in le leaning. Leaning, and now you're decided? Yes. Okay. Now, three of you have not, so let me start with you first, Joe. Why? I think there are still, first off, I, I certainly respect the vice president and the work that she uh, is doing uh, in her office. Um, I think that there are still some, at least for me, some personal policy differences. Um, I don't think that I still can't get behind her uh, policies on abortion. That's just something that I, I can't get behind because that's the right to life is so fundamental in this country that it becomes without that right being respected. It's incredibly difficult to talk about anything else. So I have a policy difference, a number of policy differences with her. That's the biggest one that comes to mind. But at the same time, I'm also I'm still not sold on the former president either, just because of his his personality, his actions on January 6th, uh, just the way that sometimes he treats people. It's that gets to be a little bit difficult for me. So two quick follow ups here. No, number one. So you don't you're not leaving here planning to vote for Trump. You're leaving here still not knowing what to do. I came in here leaning uh, in uh, the direction of the former president. Uh, I have not made a final decision. Okay. Uh, the vice president approached you mm -hmm. as she was walking out and yeah. we could hear a little bit of it from afar. But you were having a conversation about your disagreement on abortion. Yes. Um, obviously, you still disagree with her. Uh, what did it mean to you that she took the time to talk to you? Did it did it mean anything at all? It meant quite a bit, actually. I, I will respect that. Anybody who's willing to hear ideas that are in opposition to hers and that's or or to anybody's really for that matter. That's something that that is a personality trait that I really appreciate. And that is certainly something that um, like I try to have in myself. I try to I do try to listen to as many uh, points of view as possible in my day to day life to, to try to get that. So I, I appreciate that element for her. It's just sometimes this can be so very fundamental that that particular issue can be so very fundamental to how we talk about anything else, the, the right to life, uh, not just abortion, but the respect of life from the beginning to the end uh, is so very fundamental to how we operate as a country. Well, we have 12 days to keep in touch with you as we go forward. We'll come back to the conversation. <laughs> I just want to go back to the back row a little bit. Uh, so Pam and Lauren, Pam on my left, Lauren on my right. Uh, so you didn't, you're not leaving here planning to vote for her. Um, do you leave here any clearer? In either direction? You know, actually, I think if I had to pick right now, I would I would pick her. If you had to pick right now? I would, but yes. But is, is that you changed your mind since I asked the question a minute ago, or that's where you're, str you're more strongly leaning there? Is there, what's, what's missing? If there's, a, if there's a missing link to get you to, absolutely, what is it? <sighs> that's a tough question. Um, I guess a lot of the foreign policy is really my biggest concern, but overall, I think I think she is a better candidate. Okay. And you're a registered Republican. I am an independent. You're an independent now. Yes. Who'd you vote for in 2020? Um, I voted for Trump. You voted for Trump. Yes. So if you vote for Harris in the math, that's a big deal, especially where we live here yeah. in the suburbs. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. We'll come back to that as well. You also had a conversation. I did. With the vice president yes. after. Uh, she immediately, you're the first one she sought out. That's lovely. Uh, yeah. Tell me about it. What did you care? I don't want to violate your privacy or her privacy. No, that's okay. But the, the, to the point you I, can. And I really felt that. And I really, um, I came out of this uh, feeling, um, uh, just kind of a feeling of adoration of her personally. I think personally she is 
a good person and there was a nice connection, especially as a woman. There are a lot of things that I connect with her as a woman. Um, however, I am very big on details. I'm big on numbers. Um, I am a widow with 100% responsibility for my family, for my kids, for their tuitions, for my bills. And so I do my own taxes. I'm very much on top of every dollar. And so um, that is where, and I'm not really getting it from either candidate, to right. be honest. Um, so I, that's where I just want to see what lines up. And, and, I, and I don't know if it's with this kind of environment that you can't commit to something, mm -hmm. but um, I really do have to vote for my family. Um, and, and another thing that is um, very much a turnoff, and this is with both candidates, stop trashing each other. We don't care. Stop trashing Trump. Trump, stop trashing the vice president. We don't care. The voters don't care. We don't even know the people they're talking about, that this person said this and that. How does that impact the voters? That's who you're talking to. That's who you're serving. We, this, this feels like high school the gossip. We don't care. We don't want to hear it. You are right, and I will say that we have seen a rise in anti-Semitism. It is something that we have to be honest about and we have to deal with. As Attorney General, I actually published a hate crimes report um, on a regular basis, and anti-Semitism was among the highest forms of hate in our country, and this was before October 7. And we know what we've seen since. Part of what we've got to do is talk with people so that they understand what are the tropes, what are the, the roots of, of what we are seeing, um, so that we can actually have people be more understanding. We need to have laws in place that make those who would commit crimes on behalf of anti-Semitism and hate, that they pay a serious consequence. We need to have the deterrence so that doesn't happen. We need to ensure that college students <coughs> are safe in their school and feel safe to be able to go to class. But I'm gonna tell you what doesn't help. Again, I invite you to listen and go online to listen to John Kelly, the former chief of staff of Donald Trump, who has told us, Donald Trump said, why, essentially, why aren't my generals like those of Hitler's? Like Hitler who has referred several times, we've heard the reports for years. Do you believe Donald Trump is anti-Semitic? I believe Donald Trump is a danger to the well-being and security of America. He has said that he, he's casting himself as a protector of Israel. Do you believe you would be more pro-Israel than Donald Trump? I believe that Donald Trump is dangerous. I believe that when you have a president of the United States who has said to his generals, who work for him because he is commander in chief. These conversations, I assume many of them took place in the Oval Office. And if the president of the United States, the commander in chief is saying to his generals, in essence, why can't you be more like Hitler's generals, Anderson? Come on.